What do you think? Needs work. <laughs> See, this was spray painted. Spray paint. Yes, yeah, somebody refinished it. It was a beautiful idea. And they wanted it to sparkle. They added glitter. And we're here again. It's that time of the year. The Ugly Duckling Challenge, hosted by Corey from Desert DIY. This challenge is my absolute favorite. The challenge is to find the ugliest piece of furniture that you can find and turn it into something beautiful. There's also a theme for this challenge, and that's add a little sparkle. Now, in this piece of furniture's case, I think we have to do a little make under because there's just a little bit too much sparkle and that says a lot coming from me. <laughs> I was so excited when I saw this piece on Facebook Marketplace. I knew it would be the perfect piece for the An Ugly Duckling Challenge. I loved it so much I bought it about a couple weeks before the Ugly Duckling Challenge was even announced. There's a ton of water damage on the top of the piece. After inspecting it, it's definitely the top is not wood. And then it has all this crushed glass on the top drawer fronts that's been glued on. And every single drawer has an issue. That I didn't know. I specifically asked seller if the drawers were in good working condition and he said, yep, they were they work great, <laughs> which was a complete lie. There are some serious issues, like even that they knew about. They put screws in the on the block so that it won't close all the way. I'm not sure why they didn't want them to close all the way, but that was intentional by the owner. That little drawer is the only drawer that closes. So this is it. This is the ugly duck. I want to take this ugly duck and turn it into a beautiful swan. First thing I need to do is strip this top. And you might be asking, why are you going to strip it? Well, if you look here, you can see all these crackles. The paint is coming off. So if I just put my paint on top of there, it's not going to stick. It's going to come off because it's peeling already. But I don't really... I don't really know what's going on. I don't really know what's underneath at this point. So I'm just going to start with the top and that's it and see what we got going on. I know there's a lot of water damage. So I am, I am, there's a lot of water bubbles. I'm, I'm being really hopeful at this point that, you know, everything is going to go well. So I just apply a pretty thick layer of uh, citrus strip and then I put some plastic wrap over it. 45 minutes later, I come back and it scrapes off and it scrapes off really well. So I'm super happy about this. I'm like, okay, there's two layers of paint here. I think one is the factory finish and then the other is the spray paint that they painted on there. Since it's really, really hot out, I have to work in sections while I'm removing it or the paint dries. So I know you can see I still have some of the plastic wrap on there. That's because my, um, it's already drying. So I need to hurry up and get as much paint as I can off. And I'm using after wash instead of mineral spirits. I like after wash a lot better. They both stink. They both have really strong odors, but after wash just, it's a little bit cleaner for me and it cleans up a little bit better than the mineral spirits. So I was feeling really positive about the top. Everything went well. And then I get to this part. The first mistake I made here was applying the citrus strip over the glass. <laughs> um, I knew I needed to strip it off. I don't know why I thought it would work, but this, this glass is glued down with a ton of glue. It's probably like, I don't even know, but it's maybe Gorilla Glue. I'm not sure what they used, but <laughs> huge mistake. I should have tried to get the glue off first and then strip the outer edges with the paint on it. So here I am with this giant mess and the glass just won't budge. 
And the citrus strip just made a huge mess for me to have to figure out. After just messing with it for about a half an hour, um, <laughs> of course I started getting pretty frustrated, but I you know, started to think, what am I gonna do next? Because this is not working, obviously. So finally, after an hour, I think, <laughs> what removes glue? Denatured alcohol. So I grab the little bit of denatured alcohol that I have left and I let it soak on the drawer front. And once it's soaked in, I come back with a real scraper, a paint scraper instead of a putty knife. And I just, I just start going for it. And thankfully it starts to come up way, way easier than before. Here's the thing though, <laughs> now I'm out of denatured alcohol. So I think what else removes paint and you know, all of that glass cleaner. Glass cleaner has ammonia in it. So it's pretty good for removing things like glue and all that stuff. So I let the ammonia stick on or sit on there for a while and then I start to peel back. But not only am I peeling back the glass and the glue, but I'm also peeling back the actual finish of the dresser. So now we're getting into what's underneath the original finish. And it's not wood, you know? So I already know I'm in trouble, but at this point I'm really frustrated and I just wanna get this glass off. And I have to be careful because it is glass, so it's sharp. <laughs> I just, Never. I always thought, no, crush, crushed glass would look really pretty on something. Never. I'll never use it on a piece of furniture, ever. Never. Not after this. I just keep at it until all the three drawers are finished and this is what I'm left with. I'm just kind of feeling upset with myself that I got myself into this, but I don't know, I still have a little bit of confidence that I can fix this and that it doesn't have to be as hard as I'm making it. I feel like I haven't done much and I'm about four days into the project. So I decide to work on these little appliques and I was gonna strip them off because, you know, they were chipping and if I paint over it or try, I can't sand it. So I just figured I'm gonna have to, you know, strip it. And halfway through, nothing wants to come off. It's a mess. I'm like, you know what? I'm not doing this. <laughs> no way. They got to come off. So I start with my scraper and I just, I just pluck it off. I'll put something else on there. That's what I'm thinking in my head. We'll cover it with something else. I have would you pens. It'll all work out, but I'm not going to do this to myself. Not for another day. It's kind of nuts. So once I get it off, I have to take all the screws off. There's like a hundred tiny little screws and there's a lot of uh, glue they were glued on. So I'm gonna have to remove that too. Once that's done, I bring out my orbital sander. Now I decided I am not gonna strip the rest of the base of this piece. I stripped all the drawer fronts, every single one. I am not gonna go through that with this entire piece. My orbital sander seems to be working really good here. I would use my mouse for all the curves. I couldn't find my mouse though, so I, I don't know. Again, then I just started getting a little stressed out because I couldn't find my mouse anywhere and going over these curves, if I had the mouse with the surf prep sanding pad, it would have just gone a lot easier. But that's not the name of the game here, I guess. So I just do what I can and I get rid of any chips that I see. I'm making sure that everything is really, really smooth. I put it on its back and I just start working the fronts, the sides, everywhere. I want most of the paint gone. I know that it's not gonna take all the paint off, but if I can get that smooth um, matte finish on it, then I know we're gonna be just fine. And I decided to remove the legs. I'm gonna sand the legs to nice and smooth, get most of the paint off. 
I knew with all of that particle board um, exposed that the drawer fronts were gonna be really difficult to get into with um, without my mouse sander, but I did end up using my scraper, which worked really, really well. And as for all the water damage on top, oh, I was so happy. I didn't have to carve it out like you do sometimes when there's bubbles that won't come off. This, it came right off with my sander. I only used, I had 120 grit and it came off so nice and sanded really, really smooth on all the bubbles. There were like, I don't know, like 40 bubbles on the whole thing. And then I grabbed some plastic wood, um, wood filler, and my plastic wood was a little dry, which worked out perfectly so that I could fix the dents in the trim. And then I, you know, I ended up adding a little bit of water to my plastic wood so that I could um, bring it back to life. And then I started on my drawer fronts and everywhere that the soft particle board was exposed, I did add some wood filler to it. I just smoothed out the wood filler with my glove and then once it dried, I sanded it as smooth as I could get. I will say there was one drawer, actually two drawers that didn't, I didn't sand perfectly. So they do have some texture on them still, but I did try my hardest. And then I used um, the spray shellac on all the drawer fronts so that I could make my life really easy. I just happened to have it. With this project, because it's not real wood, I don't want to put any more money into it than I already have. So I'm using what I have. And I have this shellac that I'm going to use with one of my little Dixie Bell sponges that I just cut up. And I am going to cover it with the shellac. I do two coats and I spray the drawer fronts with two coats. Now I'm using the shellac because again, it's not wood, it's particle board and I need there to be some kind of shell covering because I don't wanna have water damage. And if I went right over it with a water-based primer instead of shellac, which is alcohol-based, then it would have just gave it water damage again. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I come into the insides and I'm like about to start working on these drawers. And why did they put these blocks in? This isn't how the dresser was made. These are not there for supports. These are there so that the drawers don't close. For whatever reason, they didn't want their drawers to close and they thought that was right. When clearly it was not right. The drawers were in such bad condition. Every single drawer needed something. So I had to bust out until it worked, I had to go through each and every drawer and bust out some of those, take them off, the wooden blocks. Um, and it was 100 degrees on this day. So I was just like so over this project. This project, I, I'm like well in a week into this project by now. So it was just a little frustrating. The, the dresser does no longer has a bottom. <laughs> I took that bottom right off. It was so damaged anyway that it doesn't need it. I don't care for it. It's just not, I, I just, I removed it with my hammer. <laughs> then I called it a day and I decided the next morning to bring everything in the house. At this point, there's still, I needed repairs. You know, there's drawer slides missing and just a lot going on still, but I, it was, it's so hot out that I had to bring everything in. And now that I have it sh with two coats of shellac, I decided to add two coats of Dixie Belle's Boss in gray. It's like insurance for me because I did add the two coats of shellac, but there were some porous and non-porous parts. And when I lay my paint down, there'll be two different colors. So then I decided I was actually gonna buy um, new hardware for it. I don't want to put money into it, but I gotta. So I used Dixie Bell's mud to fill in the um, the holes. And while doing that, I realized this piece of trim was missing, but I did find it, thankfully. So I just glued it back down. Then I went back through all the drawers and I started making more repairs. Um, a couple of them were missing the rails, so I put those back on, and that, that's pretty easy. I'm so glad that they all fit and there were no issues with that, but um, 
every drawer did end up having an issue. It was, it's, I just can't. I did not record the whole thing because at that point, we, you know, recording to make the video and working on the piece is a lot of work. So, um, but just trust me, every single drawer had an issue that I did have to fix. And I wanted to show you here, I did put the Dixie Belle mud on, but once it dries, I, I end up putting a second or third coat on every time because when it dries, it sinks. And when I'm sanding it, I, I want there to be, I don't sand it flush. I leave a little bit of extra mud on there so that you can't see the hole. And I called it a day. So here's the next day. Um, I decided I'm gonna start this piece by sanding it. Yes, this has shellac on it, but I want to give it a nice sanding because I do want my finish to be as smooth as I can. So sanding in between coats isn't always necessary, honestly. It depends on what paint you're using, what condition your piece is. You have to make your own judgments. But again, I am vacuuming, sanding, cleaning, uh, doing all the things again. I will say though, I know I always say it, I'm saying it again, prep work is key to a beautiful piece. If, if the piece looks like garbage underneath your paint, it's gonna look like garbage once you put the paint on. What's that saying? If you put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig? That's kind of like the same thing. <laughs> I, I kind of hate that reference, but it's the same idea here. I'm using my roller because I don't want any brush strokes and I feel like the the foam roller really helps with no brush strokes but also it's fast it's pretty quick and again I just want to tell you how important it is if you want that really smooth top which I do because there was so much texture underneath to begin with I'm sanding I'm just scuff sanding Now, there used to be the appliques on the sides that I took off. I wanna replace those, so I'm using a would you bend. Um, I just take the would you bend out and I decide which way I want it to go. You can go any way you want, whatever you like. And usually you would add like a, your heat gun to it, but my piece is so flat right here and the would you bend is so flat that it's all gonna work out and I don't even have to use my heat gun. So I just applied some tight bond wood glue to the back. I use my finger to spread it out and then I stick it on there and I just hold it for, I would say like 60 seconds and where I want it to be. And then once it dries, I go on to the other side and do the same. And after about 15 minutes, the wood is mostly dry, but not all the way dry. I don't let it dry all the way. Then I take a brush and I take my water mister and I just clean up all that glue. And if you just wash your brush afterwards with some soap, it'll be fine. Now for the good stuff. I'm using Dixie Belle Silk. It's an all-in-one paint in midnight green. I've never used this color. I've had it for a while. I, I completely forgot I had it. Um, but it is gorgeous. I'm using my roller again because I I want to avoid the brush strokes and I'm only, I'm not blending or anything so when I'm not blending I think the roller is perfect if I'm not using multiple colors um, if I'm only using one color I love the roller I will say I'm not sure I do think it is because of the roller because I had this little um, this little brush I was using for to get in some detailed spots and it did take four coats with the roller which is very unusual usually it's like two coats and then maybe one with some touch-ups when I use the brush but because I used the roller I did have to add four coats but I still have a quarter of the paint left so it, I mean it all worked out in the end And then for the top, ideally if it was a wood top and I was using this midnight green, I would have went with like a dark walnut or maybe even an espresso because look at how dark that green went. So I wanted the, the top to be really, really rich. Um, so I used Coffee Bean by Dixie Belle in their chalk mineral paint line. This, I can use my water mister to take out any of the brush strokes, but also, you know, using the water mister and the roller 
there were no brush strokes and my finish because I did all that work in prepping and and sanding and sanding it came out it's so good <laughs> it came out flawless and then I go back to putting the drawers in and I see again all these little yuckies that I kind of wanted to forget about <laughs> I have to fix them so that's what I did I don't know what all this gunk is but it's in there it was like glue now I'm using a redesign with Prima transfer called beautiful things I chose this transfer because of the colors I a couple weeks ago I was at Sarah's Sarah B's busy hive it she is an elite Dixie Belle retailer and um, she sells redesign with Prima transfers and she's in LaGrange uh, Park, Illinois. I was at her shop and when I saw this, I knew I needed it. I just, the colors are so rich and vibrant. And then I really didn't know what base color I was going to use with it or if I was going to blend or what. But I'm telling you, when you have these gorgeous rich flowers using a gorgeous rich green and a gorgeous rich brown you cannot go wrong you can't and nature says so because think about when you're looking at a bouquet <laughs> when you have all the bright colors with of course then you have your stem you know uh your leaves your brown and your greens you just and i always decide which brown and greens or blues or turquoises based on the color of the flowers I'm using. So if these were pastels and not those like royal rich colors, if they were pastels, I probably would have went with like a softer green. Um, but this all worked out so well and I was so happy that I had the products at home besides the transfer. When I saw that transfer, I knew, I knew it. I just was, I fell in love. So I take the transfer off the backing paper and I'm just gonna work in little sections because I have all of that trim. Um, you know, I just wanna be really careful of not ripping up my transfer. So I take the backing paper off, I rub it on with my stick and then that front paper comes off. And then once it's on there, I use my burnishing pad uh, just to try to get rid of that halo, make sure that there's no bubbles, there's no air underneath the transfer. Um, the pad actually takes the air right out. Once I have my transfer on, I want to seal the piece and I'm using Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin. I use my sprayer for the clear coat because I don't want streaks. I just, it's so easy um, for me to apply the clear coat with the sprayer, even indoors. I applied a total of three coats of the sealer on the entire piece including the top I waited about two hours in between the coats that's pretty important you don't want to put um, your sealer on while it's still wet you want to let it dry for a while you know make sure everything is real hard and good and then you're gonna apply your next coat and then I remembered I didn't even paint the feet so I'm using the coffee bean on the feet um, I just applied two coats and waited for it to dry and then I sprayed them with my sprayer and then put them right back on at this point I'm moving right along with this project and things are going so much smoother um, I'm feeling good about it everything's coming together but man that prep work that prep work took two full weeks to get it right I drill new holes for the new hardware. Now you could have done this a while ago before you even added paint, but I was so indecisive on what I was doing with the poles and stuff, so it did take me a little longer. And I, I feel confident at this point that I wasn't gonna mess it all up. So I end up putting on the poles last, one of the last. Now here's where my sparkle and my shine comes in. I'm using Dixie Belle's uh, gilding wax and bronze on the would you bends and then on the front I have these little handles here they just don't quite match the other handles so I add a little bit of gold sparkle to the front and here's a reminder of what we were working with and here it is today this project was quite the experience it tried my patience um, we had our ups and downs but I think overall it turned out pretty beautiful there are a um, couple things that I 
wish turned out better. Like one of the drawers, there's some texture on it that drives me a little nuts, but the way it was at the beginning to what it is now, I'm pretty happy. The top is so beautiful. The top really makes it, it, it looks like butter. I wanna say thanks to Corey for hosting this and be sure to check out the playlist in the description box down below to see all the other participants. I'll see you next time.